You are listening to a Higher Things production. Higher Things is a 501c3 nonprofit organization whose mission is to make the gifts of Christ Jesus known to youth and young adults through gospel rich content like you are about to hear. Consider joining our supporters who make this ministry possible by donating at higherthings.org slash giving or by clicking the link in the show notes. And now, Higher Things presents The Uncultured Saints with Pastors Eli Leedsow and Harrison Goodman. Hey kids, it's The Uncultured Saints and uh, we're... Like you're like driving a yeah it, it's it's like the fake steering wheel they give to kids and the go-kart like louder yeah right because you got the little kids that are sitting next to you in the double seater mm-hmm. they think they're driving yeah 100 percent. right fun to, some, they know i think on some level they know but it's fun to it's fun to participate it's also like when you're the little sibling and you get the controller that's not actually plugged into anything <laughs> but you get to help with the video game <laughs> right um, right yeah yeah so, but there's only two. There's only two players. Oh no, no, you're there. Yeah, you're you're playing all of the bad guys. Just <laughs> do that. Oh, oh gosh, sucks. again. Sucks. All right. <clears throat> what are we doing? We're, uh, we're still cares. plugging through Mark. Still, still plugging through Mark chapter six, but. But, but Jesus this is the shortest general. gospel, and we're already like on episode eighty-five. Yeah, I mean, nobody's gonna make it this far. It, you, I mean, there are denominations out there that still believe in penance. Um, somebody <laughs> might. <laughs> somebody <laughs> might. <laughs> we're not uh, for it, but you know, yeah, this is gonna maybe be we can rescue <clears throat> a Catholic. Um, right. You know what we should do? I don't know how we do it because I'm not uh, tech savvy. Um, but there's uh. uh we should probably have something like, if you've made it this far, uh, uh, mention something in, in the comments. <laughs> to say, write something. You just Literally. want to set yourself up for a disappointment? Is that what you want to do here? <laughs> right. I want, to see, I want to see how many people have actually made it this far. How many people episode, is a plural word. You realize that, right? <laughs> episode 83. I want, to, I, want to know if Rick, person. I want to know yeah. if Rick has made it to episode 83. And, and and made it three minutes into episode eighty three so that he can write something. Your personal phone number, and we'll see how it goes. In the co- no, just Rick, Rick. If you're out there watching, go. just write something in the comments. Okay, all right. Let's see how this plays out. Um, immediately, uh, Mark chapter six, verse forty five. He being Jesus, made his disciples get into the boat and go before <clears> him to the other side to Bethsaida, while he dismissed the crowd. And after he had taken leave of them, he went up on the mountain to pray. And when evening came, the boat was out on the sea, and he was alone on the land. And he saw that they were making headway painfully, for the wind was against them. And about the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the sea. He meant to pass by them. But when they saw him walking on the sea, they thought it was a ghost, and they cried out, for they all saw him and were terrified. But immediately he spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. And he got into the boat with them, and the wind ceased, and they were utterly astounded, for they did not understand about the loaves, but their hearts were hardened. This is the word of the Lord. Do you want to just wrap up the rest of six? When they had crossed over, they came to the land of Genezareth and moored to the shore. And when they got out of the boat, immediately people recognized him being Jesus and ran about the whole region and began to bring the sick people on their beds wherever they heard that he was. And wherever he came, in villages, cities, or countryside, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and implored him that they might touch even the fringe of his garment. And as many as touched it were made well. This is the word of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. I just do that because uh, uh, verses uh, 53 uh, through the end, I don't want to pretend that there's not a lot in, in right. parts of Scripture, but it, I don't know if we're going to have to go over <clears throat> much of that. It, it just kind of uh, uh, is a uh, – that that just kind of shows the this catalyst of what Jesus is still doing. And like everybody is reckoning. It doesn't matter where he goes at this point. Sure. Like his fame is such – that wherever he goes, they recognize him as Jesus, and they know exactly what to do. Absolutely. All right, so, so, so what does this mean? What does Jesus walking on water mean? I don't yeah. know. There's a lot. There's a lot to this. 
I don't want to just say what it means. I don't know. I think we should kind of like unpack, don't want to don't this. Unpack don't. what it means, right? Okay. Um, <clears throat> we had talked last time. This was uh, the, um, the sorry. The feeding of the five thousand was the uh, only uh, miracle minus the resurrection that was recorded in all of the um, yeah the gospels. I think this one is recorded in all of the synoptic gospels, but not in John's, I believe. <clears throat> and then, and you have in, in this one, in this particular miracle, you do have different, um, different details that are told, right? I mean, this is the one where we get to hear about Peter walking on the water too, but that's just, I believe, from Matthew's perspective. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think, I think Luke uh, uh, has uh, has has the same. Well, it does have the same miracle, but it's a little bit different. <clears throat> But anyway, so it's all there. It's all important stuff. Are you looking it up? Is that what you're doing? Because you're I'm staring blankly. Right now. Yeah. Blankly. Yeah. I'm just reading. I'm trying to sound out the words. Um, so keep going. Oh, I thought you were actually going to let us know if I said that right. Is it in Matthew? Oh. Is, is that where Jesus yeah, walks? Yeah, in Matthew. In? Is that where it, Peter it, walks it, in the water? Yeah. Um, John just a side note. He should have stayed in the boat. Luke. Yeah, that's that's the whole point. Yeah. It's a good, good place. So, anywho, all right. So Jesus walks out of the water here. Well, what does this remind us of? Does it remind us of anything? Or let me no, no, no. Yes, what's it does. Odd about, okay, but first, before we get to that, what's odd about this? What's odd about Mark's version that you don't see in Matthew's or Luke's? So I don't have Matthew's or Luke's open in front of me, but just sort of what's what's different about this is is Jesus' sort of erratic behavior. I actually understand sort of wanting to go up on the mountain to pray. Um, this is this is good and godly. Uh, uh, the, the, I'm just going to sneak across the lake real quick and surprise him later. That he meant to pass by them uh, is is weird. Uh, he told them to go get in the boat. He being Jesus, who knew that there would be a storm that was going to come up. He he sent the disciples out into the storm. Uh, so that the wind would be against them, so that they would be afraid that they are perishing. Um, that they thought that he was a ghost is is weird. Like almost every single thing about this story is is pretty weird. Yeah, he compelled them. I think the, mm-hmm. the Greek even it's like they <clears throat> he had to actually compel them to get in the boat and go. Um, which is uh, yeah, that is interesting. Um, but this right on the heels of feeding of the five thousand. Where last time we talked about Jesus, uh, uh, how, uh, well, that particular miracle does uh, so much give us a, a, a Psalm 23 sort of vibe, right? Yeah. Where Jesus is the shepherd. He is the good shepherd who does all these things. <clears throat> it's so, a very different picture, yeah. Well, it is a very different picture, except the fact that he 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 wants to still be the one to dismiss the, the, the 5,000 mm-hmm. plus people, right? It's it's not like he is uh, he's some uh, charlatan or snake oil salesman who just came into town and does the show yeah, the and shed, then tries yeah. to tries to get out on by boat as fast as he can, right? Yeah. Um, he's like, no, 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 you guys go. Um, I'll be there. I got to pray, uh, but before I do that, I have to dismiss this crowd. Right? I care for these sheep. Right? This is more than just a show. So that's an interesting thing that we get to see about about Jesus here. Right off okay. the bat. But I don't know. <clears throat> I said I said one, well, now it's your turn. I, I said on a upon bunch something. of them. Um I I genuinely actually struggle a little bit with uh, the, the Jesus who makes them confront the storm. Uh especially because that, his though? intention. I, I mean I, I'm just pushing it back a little bit. We I know, know that, that Jesus all knowing. Well, I know Jesus in his omniscience knows all things, right? <clears throat> but that doesn't necessarily mean, I mean, I know it's tough for us in our finite minds to, to, to kind of get this wrapped around. Um, like, but he forgot to check divine weather bug. Like what, what are you, what are you? <laughs> no, no, not at all. But it's, it's like, Jesus doesn't always use his, his uh, omniscience in, in regards to, to every single action that he's doing. Right. I think we've already kind of got to that point where, and and I think maybe you and I disagreed where uh, the it's Jairus's daughter, right? And then the woman in the crowd touches him, right? <clears throat> he begs um, the question. Yes, he asks the thing. He, you don't think he knew? He just wasn't trying to produce the answer. I don't think he knew. Okay. Or maybe he did, but 
But at the same point in time, that at least brings up to, okay, in Jesus' humanity, in his humiliation of setting aside some of his uh, 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 divine attributes at certain times, Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if we're at liberty to say that Jesus uh, uh, purposefully um, sent these guys out knowing there was going to be a a squall, I'm going to use that term, a squall out on the Sea of Galilee that day. Uh huh. Um, so challenge, uh, flag on the play. Okay. Uh, because my my point being this is is that he he was, was willing you to sort of. You don't know football. <laughs> he was willing to allow them to be uh, to to be challenged by the storm, to to be overwhelmed by this storm, to to be confronted with with their own inevitable death by this storm uh, and and you can sort of say, well, in his humanity, he might not have known that it was coming, but in his humanity as he's walking across the water while the storm is raging on he sees the disciples he saw that they were making headway painfully for the wind was against them and he also meant to pass right by them had they not seen him so he he is subjecting them to this thing and I, i i think he knew about it but even if he didn't he saw it happening was like let's just tippy toe across the water yeah so what do you make of that because that's the big thing, right? And I don't know. The thing is, I don't think in the two-year lectionary, uh, uh, three-year lectionary, sorry, it's the second year of the two-year of the three-year lectionary. I don't know if we get this account. We might. Um, I just always remember preaching on uh, Peter, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, because yeah. Peter should have stayed in the boat. I, I'm willing to actually talk more about Jesus and the saint here because I'm not a papist. No, I'm not, I'm not well, doing that. I'm, I'm, I'm not lecture. trying to get what? back to Peter. What I'm trying to say is I don't remember us ever actually getting uh, – uh, to Jesus. What do you say? What do you no? What do you say about him passing by? Because that's the big thing about Mark. Mark is the only one who says he meant to pass by. How mm-hmm. do you preach that? How do you preach that to the people in the pews where you're saying, "Okay, fine, I'm going to put you in the same boat as the disciples. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, you're in the midst of a storm, a raging storm, and your Lord." Comes to you on water. That's what Matthew and Luke say. Mark says he he actually sees you there and wants to pass right by you. Yeah. How do you actually, preach that sermon? I preach that sermon by talking about <clears throat> the water for is exactly what it is. It it is death itself. Uh the, the water is death, especially while the wind was against them. That's an understatement in kind of a Midwestern sort of way when you say, like, I'm fine, uh, when somebody asks you how you are, because you can't actually tell them when they just say, How's it going? You you can't say terrible. You have to say it's going or still kicking. Um, the, the wind was against them and, and they were going to die out there. Uh, and they knew it because they were fishermen. Um, I, I, I preach this sort of recognizing that, that Jesus, as he walks across the water, is not there to show them how great he is. In, in fact, uh, they're, they're already struggling with this because they want a Jesus who is uh, how great thou art. Um, rather, he is a Jesus who walks over death and goes ahead of the disciples through death. And even if in another narrative, he has to reach down into death and pull somebody out of it, resurrecting them. The point of this is that Jesus walks across death while we struggle with it, but he does it, he does it for our good and he has compassion upon us. Um, because when they are afraid, the, the thing that he says um, is, is not, you guys are so stupid, uh, but, but rather it is, take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's, what, that's what I would do. Uh, <clears throat> that's how you preach it. <laughs> okay. No, I like it. I, I, I... So uh, pushing back uh, 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 against that, so... Or not pushing back, but I guess just trying to extrapolate out. So what does that mean then? When Jesus, I mean, <clears throat> what's the one-to-one ratio? Jesus sees me in the midst of death and he walks past. He goes like ahead. He's walking past. Yes, he goes ahead. And and that's the point. Um, that, that Jesus' job is is not his will, is not to simply keep bad things away from you, but make them powerless to hold you. Okay. Oh, okay. No, I like that. That's good. Yeah. I yeah, I'd probably go a different way. But well, well, how? Which way would you go? I don't think that's wrong. You, you, you do it. <clears throat> well, no, the thing. Okay, so uh, this has a lot of Old Testament. And again, I'm not. I'm not smart in and of myself, right? It, commentaries help me quite a bit in researching, and 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 hopefully that's what a lot of pastors do, and they don't just sit down to write a sermon based upon their own thoughts. Um, 
But uh, like Goodman did there. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> no, this is a lot of Old Testament. <laughs> A lot of Old Testament, uh, 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 not analogies, but uh, uh, callbacks to um, that we get to hear this. Uh, a, a couple of them, if we turn to, uh, I believe it's Psalm 77, uh, okay. we get to hear. <clears throat> and so, and I and I bring this up because uh, we've got, you might have a lot of proponents that say, uh, hey, uh, Jesus uh, doesn't often say that he's God, right? Uh, he'll say uh, he's the son of man or, or, or this or that. It's usually other people who are saying that he's God. But he those words don't actually come out of his mouth. And I, I, I first, I think that's a, a poor argument if you actually I understand what son of all, man yeah. means and what if you uh, – all of these things, right? <clears throat> but also – I am. Uh-huh. Right, right. But also when he goes back um, – and, and the things that he does fulfills the things of the Old Testament that speak about, uh, mm. oh, only Yahweh can do X. And then he does X. He does it. Sure. Right. It, it's not so much that he has to say, hey, I'm God. Um, I think everybody in that context and everybody in that situation uh, would be like, oh, yeah. False. Because they were utterly astounded and did not understand. <laughs> You're right. Uh, because because but, their hearts were hardened, just like Pharaoh's heart yeah. was hardened uh, when he has seen everything there and cannot deny Yahweh, and yet he does nonetheless. Because that's I, that's I, I what really the like sinner does. With this. Yeah. Okay. Lay it out there. Yeah. Keep going. What's the seventy seventh Psalm? Uh, okay. Those who don't have okay. it memorized. <clears throat> if you don't have it memorized, uh, go all the way to uh, verse uh, nineteen and twenty, and and it speaks about. Uh, obviously, this is. Uh, uh, speaking uh, the writer of the psalm is speaking about Yahweh here it says your way was through the sea your path through the great waters yet your footprints were unseen you led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron <clears throat> so that's hearkening back to red sea but it's talking about Yahweh being with the people through the red sea bringing them to the salvation thing. so so we got that and then we got another one which is uh Isaiah Isaiah 43 um do, do, do. Where are you? Isaiah 43, verse 16, I believe I have written down. And that says, uh, Thus says the Lord who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, who brings forth chariot and horse, army and warrior. They lie down, they cannot rise. They they are extinguished, quenched, quenched like a wick. <clears throat> Again, we've got reference to the Red Sea, but this is, this is Yahweh's domain, right? This is where Yahweh uh, comes from. Uh, and his way, his pathway is through this, right? And he is the one who's actually doing this. Um, so those are two uh, uh, references of that. But then even more so, I think uh, uh, the best reference of this is if we go to Job. Um, so if you're uh, looking up there, uh, Job. <clears throat> and uh, duh, 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 where is it? Job 9. I'm going to go. I don't know if you're clickety clicking on your your screen mm-hmm. there to look it up yeah <clears throat> all right so job nine uh we start with um we start with uh uh well i'm gonna do eight but if you if you understand the context like uh, of what's coming beforehand um uh this is this is job speaking about um yahweh being a creator god right so, uh, so he t- he talks about shakes the uh, the earth into its place, and then and bringing out the sun, and then setting uh, the the constellations in the sky. And verse eight, it says, "Who alone stretched out the heaven and trampled, right, trampled the waves of the sea, right?" So Job is speaking about Yahweh being the one who tramples the waves of the sea, all this sort of stuff in the context of creation here. <clears throat> so, you've got uh, Yahweh as as the the creator of all things. Um, that understanding of Old Testament. Then you also have Yahweh as as the savior of the ex uh, the Exodus, which is the quintessential uh, salvific moment in the Old Testament, pointing forward to Jesus Himself. And both of those, you've got psalmists and you've got prophets who are speaking about Yahweh walking on the sea, making His path in the sea. And then here you've got Jesus doing that. I'm going to pause there because then there's even one more thing on top of that. But I want to get your your thoughts or 
uh, no, disagreements I, about anything. I, I'm, I'm all the way with you. And uh, after I get to your last one, I think I'm actually going to try and Voltron these two together <clears> to, <throat> to form a, a, a theological robot uh, to, to fight something. Not Mighty Morphin Power Ranger them together. No. Voltron them together. Voltron them together. Right. Because Power Rangers is just a ripoff of... It's, it's yeah it's, it's actually like the halloween costume version of it where you don't actually look as cool as you imagined it when you wanted to be that for halloween but you right. still have to go that way now because you have the costume you're committed to this like walk of shame up and down your neighborhood to get candy uh even though you know <clears throat> that you look like dollar store voltron i did that one year i wanted uh, i had my yeah. mom go out of the way she went to the thrift store and everything and i was this is probably politically incorrect now but i was a hobo right um, okay. So I had like, you know, I had the, 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 the stick with the net thing on it, the, the, the dusty up faces and all this stuff. And we were doing the, the thing at school and everybody else, uh, like my best friend and two other people, uh, got some cool, like, uh, hairspray dye and they were, they went as punk rockers. And that was awesome. And I was a stupid hobo. And I, and I wanted it. And I was like, hey, mom, kid. Uh, uh, Joe's doing this. Can I do that? She's like, Are you kidding me? No, you are gonna wear that for Halloween and and All Saints Day. Both days, <laughs> both days you get away. <laughs> uh, punishment fits the crime. All right. <laughs> anyway, what's your uh, What's your last point then? You're, are, then you we'll, are you still in Job Nine? Are you still in Job Nine? I, I was. I left it. Let me uh, get back I'm, to Job right. 9. Because this there, is going to knock your socks off. Go. What verse am Ready? I looking at? We already did 8. You al- yeah. Who alone stretched out the heavens and trampled the waves of the sea? I'm just going to read till I get there. Uh, who made the bear and Orion uh, some other crazy thing in the chambers of the south? Who does great <laughs> things beyond searching out and marvelous things beyond number? Behold, he passes me by and I see him not. Ooh. He moves on but I do not perceive him. Like this is Job speaking about Yahweh trampling and walking on the waters, going by him and he doesn't see him or perceive him. And boom, Yahweh in the flesh, Jesus the Christ doing the exact same thing. Do you think Jesus said boom? (laughs) Boom. So I, I actually think both of these are right. Um, and, and I've got a theory that um, almost any great time that you, you sort of deal with a large body of water throughout the scriptures, uh, it is God conquering death. He is not the God right. of the dead, but a God of the living. He will judge the, the living and the dead, but he will raise us up first. Um, he is not a content God to sort of be subject to the sea, uh, but, but rather takes control over the thing that, that anybody who spends a lot of time around it recognizes. Even today, we have not gotten away from the fact that the sea is death. Uh, what's, what's utterly miraculous is that God has given us uh, that which pulls life out of death. There, there are fishermen who, who literally pull sustenance out of the thing that should kill you. And it never stops being the thing that should kill you. I, I don't know how to talk about this without going to baptism that that um we we have this deadly water that god conquers and gives us life through uh you can go to noah you can go to so many places even to the risen lord jesus who who actually wants to eat fish in the resurrection even after he has conquered the grave he reaches down into death and pulls out life for other people to eat nice yeah it, it, con- continuing on with that, um, and again, this is this is uh, uh, commentary stuff that uh, that I was able to extract, but it's 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 awesome, <clears throat> and it, it goes with your thing <clears throat> in this Job uh, uh, nine verse eight. Uh, the English usually translates it translates the word waves as waves because that just makes sense, right? You trampled the waves of the sea, um, but it's not waves. Um, the actual uh, Hebrew is high places. Triple the high places of the I sea, see it. Okay. and and the interesting thing about high places is high places is um, it's never a one to one ratio with waves. It's just the English context of oh, what's the high place on the high sea is, yeah. is the it wave. Um, but usually in Old Testament uh, or a lot of times in Old Testament, what does the high place refer to? It refers to uh, pagan places of worship, hmm. right? <clears throat> 
So, so he's trampling the high places of the sea. He's trampling the sea itself uh, in, in the creation that he's made. And, he, and Joe might even be alluding to the fact that Jesus is even trampling uh, the false deities of this place of death. I dig it. Kind Actually, of. I dig it. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> it's like the Captain Planet of uh, what we're doing. <clears throat> Captain Planet? Yeah. Man, I got to frog my throat. Captain Planet, isn't that the guy who uh, tells 80s kids to pick up their garbage? Yeah. Yeah, but only if you summon him uh, by combining your 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 powers of They're nature decoder and rings, rings. right? Yeah, and your decoder rings and, and a monkey. <laughs> For, oh man, that was totally so... appropriate multiculturalism. <laughs> Captain Planet, I remember time, that. Kids. That, was a different awful, time. that was an awful cartoon. Yeah, it wasn't great. Uh, but that, but back then you just watched what was on. You did you didn't have Netflix. What were you gonna yeah? And Hulu. You didn't have no. choices. You it had, was there. You're either watching the news or you're watching <laughs> Captain Planet. That's it. You were, well, the cartoons were just sort of whatever message that the the powers that be needed you to hear because the cartoons were either racism is bad, communism is bad, or not recycling is bad. And that was that was all of them. And like true on all right. counts, but um, <laughs> <laughs> like we could have gotten better quality programming to prove the point. You forgot. You forgot. Dr- drugs are bad too. Drugs were also very bad. I, yeah. I, I remember one uh, remember. that they were, uh, they did Hulk it. Hulk Hogan uh, and, uh, and, and uh, Magic Johnson. <laughs> Drank from a water fountain together. <laughs> right. Right. <clears throat> oh, Good man. Times. It actually makes sense why we are the way that we are. It does. If you think right. about it. It's yeah. seen a lot of dots to connect. <laughs> um, and, and you got anything else on, on water walking Jesus or? No. I think the uh, 80s band, The Cars, I think they had a video of uh, the lead singer walking across the pool and everybody got real mad about that. That's Mm -hmm. all I got, though. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Um, So they had crossed over. Um, Everybody's bringing their their sick people to Jesus. Uh, And the healing is a little bit different. Um, because we, we have more, more sort of garment touching and, and less like mud making or, you know, spitting or, or wet willies or any of the other ways that Jesus has healed people throughout this right. gospel. Right. <clears throat> yeah. What do you say about that? Cause sometimes he is very deliberate. Like he is saying, I am making a point. I'm making a scene here. I'm making mud. Right. This is taking time. Right. I'm going to put it in your eyes. You're going to wash. You're going to see things that people are going to look like trees. And, and then other times it's just like, oh, some dude brushed up against me and he isn't a leper anymore. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. What do you make um, of that? I, I, I would probably want to talk about relics a little wow. bit here. Um, if we have a time, we don't have a lot of time though. So um, maybe let's, let's dive into it and say what God can do versus what God wills to do. And that might be the way to do it. Um what, okay. what God can do, like it's it's possible that the relics that if you somehow found the skull of John the Baptist, uh, it could do some pretty wild stuff. Um, it's not promised to though, uh, but but rather we get to sort of talk about what is God's will, and, and there we get to to what people use the relics for, because it's always sort of we use the relics to make them do the things that we want to do. We try and turn God's will into magic and, and and drive the ship ourselves, but but rather God's will is actually healing in life. That's why he walk across the the. The, the sea that that's why he is on his way to Jerusalem. That's why he will die on the cross and rise from the grave. That God's will is actually the undoing of sin, of death, and even the sicknesses that come with it. And so we'll catch little glimpses of it along the way. Uh, and some of them will be very intentional and part of preaching. And some of them are simply going to be the things that he is enacting throughout time and space uh, because he is making manifest his kingdom. I like it. No, that works. <clears throat> Yeah, chapter six is just, it's, it's an awesome chapter, especially, uh, not, I mean, for all of the, the, the gospels, but, but I think Mark has some, some standout stuff and it's, it's, it's impossible. It's almost impossible not to see in reverse order, which may actually speak about, about, uh, kind of the, the new, the new creation sort of stuff or, or the fulfillment. <clears throat> but I hearken back to Exodus, right? Um, and, but this is, what do this is the Red Sea, or comparable, right? Connection to the Red Sea, um, sure. and and what happened last time? The feeding of the five thousand. Five thousand. In where? 
the the grassy places, the Psalm right. twenty three language. But it was but it, it was wilderness, right? Sure. I okay. mean, it wasn't in a city, right? Yeah. Um, and what did they eat mo- mainly? Bread, fish. Yeah. Bread, yeah, mostly the bread, though, right? I mean, probably like was... a five to two ratio, or <clears throat> right? Oh, fat cat. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's not but, skinny. Um, but, but that's um, uh, <laughs> that's man, that's man in the wilderness, right? Okay, okay, yeah, I respect I that. Mean, so I mean, we got we got uh, Old Testament uh, Yahweh uh, taking care of his people through uh, the Red Sea, uh, and then uh, supplying them with everything they need uh, to to support this body and life in the wilderness. Manna being one of the major ones, <clears throat> and then we got Jesus uh, doing that in reverse order, uh, uh, having compassion on these uh, sheep without shepherds, uh, filling their bellies with uh, with uh, miraculous bread, um, and then uh, treading the sea. It's, Love it's it. almost as if, uh, without saying it, Jesus is saying, I'm, I'm Yahweh. Out of the Old Testament, yeah. Love it. All right, we out. <laughs>